Knox Kane, 94. Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for the contribution, sir. Appreciate that. Or, well, uh, I will take the 93% certainty based on our our channel demographics that right. it is a sir. Okay. Sir or madam. Last 15 years. I don't know that this takes us anywhere that you haven't covered, but of course, yeah. we want to uh, honor the super chat. Last 15 years, great players, but bad coaches. This year, our players suck. Not the coach's fault. All of a sudden, anything else? No, I mean, like there are, there's, there is enough blame to go around. This is not a single source error situation. You know, whether it's, you know, figuring out how to coach this team currently about, you know, the plays to call to get them to do the things, the, you know, internal development in practice, the, you know, the rotation of the players, the performance of the players, the, you know, like everybody wants it to be one thing because it's easier to fix one thing. It ain't one thing. Everybody yeah. has a hand in it. But now I, the only thing I will say is you will trust a little bit more this coaching staff who's more proven and demonstrated excellence than any staff we've had recently, including Mark Richt, because Mark Richt was in the latter part of his career. He was coasting to retirement. So it's their fault for not getting them there now, but you have to kind of obligate them and trust them in that it is not where it needs to be now, but we are taking steps along a path to get there. And you also have to kind of take it on faith that the steps being taken there are outside of games because games are the single data point that we get to see because like we don't get to see, you know, the work in the film room. We don't get to see the practice. We don't get to see the off season program, you know, the what fourth quarter program, whatever they call it, like all those other things, you have to take it on faith that like, you know, you go down that path and you have an idea. So when I taught choir, right. My choir didn't necessarily have all the experience. I had to coach them up. I had to teach them. But in my head, I had that sound of what it needs to be at the end. So we're going through the vocalizes. We're going through all these things. We're going through the, you know, tips, tricks, techniques, you know, alignment, assignment, technique in, in football, right? So you're going through all these things to put, to give them the skills to then layer on, in my case, the music, in this case, the plays and being able to react to the plays so that when it comes time for that performance, whether that's on the stage or, you know, the field at Hard Rock or wherever else around the country, that hopefully it comes together beforehand. So then you are ready, but you have to have the sight and the vision to go through the growth process, the you know, growth and development and teaching process for, okay, we're not there now, but I know that you have the ability to get there. And I'm going to design this program to step along that path so that when it's time to be there, it gets there. Now, obviously, on Saturdays this season, we're not there. But I don't say that to say that the Saturdays this season are the entire picture. You have to trust the demonstrated work product and just overall schematic, you know, ideal of Cristobal and say, yes, we're not there. But the way that we built that team, those teams that won the Pac-12 and then went to and played in and won New Year's Six games, that's what I have in my head over here. I just need you to take a step or two, a leap maybe, leap and a bound, forward along that path. But I don't need you to have the full picture because I have the whole picture over here. But we need to get there at, by taking progressional steps. So you have to take it on faith that everything will eventually lead there. Do I want it to be, I mean, yesterday? <laughs> yes. But at this point, you have to take it on faith that the the way that the program is being structured by the person and people who are running it is true for a reason and give them the time to get there because obviously it's not there now. And so we have to continue to do that. And I mean, I don't know if it's going to be this year, next year, whenever, but a part of that, just like I wrote in the recruiting rules, is going to have to be winning games. It's going to have to be proof of concept that we are doing this and we suffered through the growing pains right, of the 2022 season to get to that 2023 ACC championship, that 2024, whatever, right? So 
it does ask you to step out on faith. It does. But you can't then go back and say, well, you know, we're excited for getting Mario Cristobal in January, in December, and say, well, he did da 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 and we're going to have that happen, but then turn tail at the sign, first sign of adversity. I just don't think that that's wise, but yeah. James, thank you so much again for the contribution. Mario is not flexible in building doesn't mean he's bad. Yeah, and again, that's just going back to what I was saying. He has a clear view, an idea of how to build a program, how to get the program to where he's had, I mean, where he had Oregon and, you know, infusing that with, you know, his other coaching experience. Um, and again, this goes back Y'all are going to hate me. I don't care. This goes back to what um, what Al Golden used to say of trust the process. So you have to buy in. And now Marcus Ball is not a slogan guy, so I'm not saying it's the same. But hopefully the process, the, the, the scheme, the ideal, the paradigm ends up working out. Um, but you have to be true to that. And, you know, hopefully Mario will be flexible and adapt the progress uh, the process, the paradigm moving forward. Because, again, if you're not getting the results, you need to change the process. I know that we're in, you know, you can call it year zero. Like, yeah, this is the, we're building, we're tearing it down to the foundation year. I would hope that there's an update to the offense moving forward from just, and I think that we've seen that, you know, we're going more at tempo after we get a first, first down, we're going, you know, more pass heavy just because we can't run the ball. But now if you develop the offensive line, you're able to run the ball and then now you can do some different things that will also, you know, the performance will, you know, impact the paradigm, I think, but you know, I hope that that updates, but yeah, you have to have a clear mentality on how you're going to do something. And I don't think that he's wrong for not being flexible because it's like, no, this is the process and we're going to, to, or whatever you want to call it. This is the scheme and we're going to, you know, follow those blueprints while we rebuild this house. Um, it does just take time. So we'll see. 